into the Super Bowl. The Detroit Lions came in with the emotion, playing for their paralyzed teammate Mike Utley, and the momentum behind their hot quarterback Eric Kramer. But the Lions' brave roar was drowned out by the loud crowd at RFK Stadium, as Detroit did the one thing that it did not want to do today, and that was get down early at a stadium where they had never won. And like a hungry lion themselves, the Washington Redskins got hold of their prey and never let go at RFK this afternoon. First official play from scrimmage, and it was downhill from there for the Lions. Eric Kramer is sacked by Charles Mann. The Redskins recover as Washington converted two turnovers into ten points in the first five minutes of the game. Ten to nothing, Washington, second quarter. Kramer and the Lions try to come back. It hits Willie Green, 10-yard strike. Now, coming into this game, every time that Green had caught a touchdown pass, the Lions had won, but not today. After Riggs was doing it for Washington on the ground, Mark Rippon went into the air and found a member of his posse, Gary Clark, with a 45-yard bomb. 27-10, Washington. You bet they are going to the show. And Joe Gibbs gets a Gatorade bath and his fourth Super Bowl. The final, another blowout for Washington over Detroit, 41-10. to The Skins win the NFC title as Gerald Riggs ran for two touchdowns. Rippon passed for two more to send Washington to a record-tying fifth Super Bowl. Dallas and Miami are the only other teams to appear in five. Barry Sanders missed the Lions' initial 45 to nothing loss at RFK to start the season, but his presence in the backfield did not make much of a difference this afternoon. Sanders was held to just 44 yards on 11 carries. And as our reporter Bob Lorenz tells us, on both offense and defense, the Redskins again displayed their Sunday best. Although this sounds a little busy, CNN Sports. With the loss, look at this, the Lions go 0-16 in Washington with their visits dating all the way back to 1939. Washington has won 11 of 12 playoff games at home and is a perfect 5-for-5 five five in NFC title games at RFK. And talk about capital punishment. The Skins outscored their playoff opponents this year, Atlanta and Detroit, 65-17. to 17. Gibbs, owner of a NASCAR team, put the whole thing in stock car racing terms, saying... These two teams have been on a crash course all year. And now we have two full weeks to ponder all the possibilities of Super Bowl 26 to be played at the Metrodome in Minneapolis on January 26th. So let's get started right now. Here's how the Redskins and the Bills stack up. It'll be a meeting of the two highest scoring teams in the league, with Washington ranked first and Buffalo second. The possibility for a lot of points on the board, especially with this game being played indoors. Washington has a slight edge on defense and the Bills with a slight offensive advantage in both rushing and passing yardage. So on paper, they match up pretty well, but this game will be played on carpet in Minneapolis. And the odds makers give the early edge to the league's most dominant team this season. Washington is listed as a six-point favorite over Buffalo. Will that carpet come into play? Well, as everybody knows, the Bills play on the stuff at Rich Stadium, all their home games, so they'll be used to playing on it. But Washington's kicker, Chip Lowmiller, should feel particularly comfortable there in the Metrodome because he kicked there in college. That's right. He had a lot Oops, of... Now, the USC Trojans had fallen out of the top 25 after suffering back-to-back -back losses to Notre Dame at home and then to Arizona on the road. Well, tonight the Trojans tried to get back on track at Arizona State. And USC has a player who can carry the team. Junior guard Harold Miner. He did just that. He shouldered the load and got the Trojans their first Pac-10 victory of the season in Tempe. The Sun Devils came out on a 19 to nothing run behind Stevin Smith, who had a terrific game, connects on the tray there. He had 20 points against George Ravelings Trojans, who had a tough week, but Harold Miner came through for him. The hanging shot in the lane, the three-point play brought his team within four, and then the Trojans went on a 16 to four run behind Miner. Baby Jordan here, as they call him, just wills this bucket in. A couple of rebounds off his own miss. He finished this game with 39 points and hit some clutch free throws down the stretch. Miner converted 12 of 16 points from the free throw line, including four in the last 33 seconds to seal the victory. Miner also hauled down 10 rebounds. As the Trojans go to 1-1 one one in the Pac-10 while the Sun Devils fall to 0-2. Seems like the golf season never actually ended, but here it is again, a new season officially opening this weekend, with all of last year's winners competing at the Elite Tournament of Champions. Third round leader Steve Elkington had gone haywire after going 55 straight holes without a bogey. In today's final round, he double bogeyed the fifth hole and then bogeyed again on number eight. 
but he kept his cool, played patiently, and finally took the title after a playoff. Here's the action from Carlsbad, California. Billy Andrade on a monster putt here. He began the day two strokes off the pace. He's nine under this long, long putt for par, and he drops it on the 10th hole. On 18 now, Brad Faction at nine under for birdie. This would put him in the lead, but Faction misses. And then Steve Elkington, the Australian who now resides in Houston, a chance to win it all, but he also misses his putt on 18 to force a sudden death playoff with Faxon. And in sudden death, first hole played, Elkington does make this putt for the victory. He opens the season with the third tournament victory of his career, overcomes that bogey trouble. And look at Freddie Couples there. In a three-way tie for third, he has now finished sixth or better in 14 of his last 17 starts. Continues his hot streak. In a separate but simultaneous competition from winners from the senior tour, Al Guyberger held on for a three-stroke victory. He needed only a final round of one over 73 to turn back Chichi Rodriguez and Bruce. Made it into the night, tied with the Rangers for first place in the Patrick Division, and with a chance to take over the lead all alone after the Rangers' loss. Well, they brought the league's best road record into Chicago to meet a Blackhawks team that is always tough at home, and they were too tough for Washington tonight at Chicago Stadium. The final, Chicago 4-2 as John Tonelli scored his first goal as a Blackhawk, so now Washington stays tied with the Rangers for the lead in the Patrick. Elsewhere in division play, the Islanders lost for the 15th straight time at the Spectrum. The basement-dwelling Flyers got four first-period goals, two of them from Kevin Deneen for the victory. The Devils go 4-1 and one on their homestand with a 5-2 win over Los Angeles. The Kings are sliding on their road trip. They have lost three out of four. Talking about troubles on the road. The expansion, San Jose Sharks, with just one victory on the road, visiting the Jets, the second-place team in the Smythe. We will be right back with the play of the day when Sports Tonight continues. Play of the day, we shuffle back to Buffalo and to Rich Stadium for a great move by the Bills, Thurman Thomas. Look at the catch there. Did you see it? Did you miss it? Well, he's on his back, but yeah, he got the catch. Let's look at it a couple of more times. It is worth a second, even a third look. Thurman Thomas flat on his back practically makes a near impossible grab. And after this play, well, Thurman just had us burning to make him our play of the day. We will wrap up the show right after we take this brief timeout.